Hi everyone, welcome to my backyard. Uh, my name is Craig Zapola. I'm a curator at the ROM. I curate North American archaeology. So as part of ROM at Home, I've decided to make these brief videos that explore specific dimensions of the North American archaeology collections at the ROM. This week's theme is the Paleolithic. What does Paleolithic mean? We can break the word down. Paleo, which you've heard when you read about the Paleo diet online, of course, uh, just means old. Lithic means stone. So archaeologists call certain periods of human history old stone ages. And basically this is a, a phrase used to refer to the earliest time periods in human history that involve stone tools. There were old stone ages or Paleolithics all around the world starting and ending at different time periods. And this is a really tricky topic when we look at it in North America. Archaeologists use this term in North America to refer to basically the oldest sites they could find. And so these might be anywhere from 12 plus thousand year old sites to sites that are about nine and a half thousand years. Now that particularly pertains to Ontario. We're not really sure actually when it began here in North America. Uh, that's up for debate at the moment. Originally thought, we, we thought that it started uh, at the end of the Ice Age uh, when um, all that water in the ocean was tied up in glaciers and there was a land bridge connecting Asia to Alaska. And originally archaeologists thought of this as one sort of group moving over, walking over into North America. Um, now we realize it's much more complicated than that. We realize that it's probably much more, much older than that, potentially much older. Uh, we recognize that it's certainly not one route, but probably multiple routes, and including not just walking, but also uh, water routes. And of course, we have to look at indigenous knowledge and indigenous perspectives, because of course, uh, indigenous knowledge tells us that first peoples have been here since time immemorial. So again, this is a topic of debate to think about. It's important to note, of course, that archaeology certainly isn't a perfect science. It has a lot to learn. And so again, we're, this is still up for debate. Now, if you're interested in this topic, you could actually look at uh, the work of people like Vine Deloria, who's an indigenous scholar, who again challenged this notion of the Paleolithic being so new and actually argued that it was much older than archaeologists thought. And you can look at this book from the 1990s where he makes this argument very clear. You can also look at my colleague Paulette Steves, who's another indigenous scholar. She's at Algoma University, and she's actually writing about the Paleolithic and indigenous knowledge right now. I believe she has a new book coming out. She's on Twitter. I recommend following her. So let's get back to the main topic at hand, the Paleolithic. What was it like? The, with the sites that we do have, with the artifacts that we do have, what do they tell us about past life? Well, they tell us, first of all, that there was a lot of stone tools being used, uh, probably amongst other things, but the most popular type of stone tool uh, that archaeologists talk about during the Paleolithic are these fluted, large fluted spear points. And these were used to hunt large game animals. And we use the term fluted to refer to these large flake scars on each side of the projectile or the spear point. And this was used to attach the spear point to the wooden part, the, the spear shaft, or the, uh, and it was hafted on. The Paleolithic in general is characterized by lots of mobility, seasonal movement for different resources. At the ROM we have a number of artifacts that are from the Paleolithic, including large spear points like this Barnes point and Ganey point. We have knives like this Cody knife. And we also have scrapers that were used to process hides. All of these would have been hafted or connected or on handles when they were in use, of course. So we don't have, we're missing all the soft parts from the Paleolithic for the most part. That means we can't talk about shoes like we talked about last week. Uh, we're missing those because these sites are so old that the, these soft parts didn't preserve. An important uh, collection, or at least part of a collection, that is at the ROM is a collection from a site called Shaguinda, Manitoulin Island, Ontario. This is an older, one of the older sites in Ontario where we can study really early human history. And this was dug by an emeritus uh, ROM curator called Peter Stork. I recommend looking at his work. Also of note, you could look uh, at what Vine Deloria says about this site uh, in, in the book that I mentioned earlier. And of course, he would, he's gonna be arguing that this site is much older than archeologists think. So what's most important about the Paleolithic? Now, again, I'm not an archeologist who digs Paleolithic sites, but really for me, the magic of the Paleolithic is the ability to bridge this huge time span between me in 2020 and a person that lived maybe 12, 13, 14,000 years ago. All right, well, that was this week's talk on the Paleolithic. Tune in next week for a talk about old copper. We'll learn about how indigenous people, of course, were making artifacts out of metals well before Europeans showed up. If you have any questions, please send them my way. Otherwise, uh, we'll see you next week.
Okay, have a good one.